Paul who all you how about Shamil Shai. That will honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And salutation to the brothers on the four corners of the earth, pushing the word and truth and sincerity. You know, uh, the Passover is a couple hours away. And, um, you know, more and more, you know, this uh, thing of ours, the truth, is getting more serious, you know. You got guys falling out the truth left and right. You know, you have, um, you know, you have uh, bouts of depression and doubt and all these different demons that plague your mind. But the thing is, you know, it's only going to get worse, you know. We have to, us in this truth, we have to suffer, you know, we have to. You know, and we also have to push through it, you know. Because the Passover was um was a difficult time, you know. During the time of Exodus, when we were on our way out of Egypt, and, you know, during the uh, the time of the Roman Empire with Yahweh Shai, you know, his Passover was of a weightier matter, too, man. You know, during the time of the Exodus, you know, we had death all around us. And, you know, during Yahweh Shai's Passover, you know, death was on the horizon. So... You know, and the man himself, he knew that, you know, through the prophecies, you know, because the prophecies were written about him. So, you know, and, you know, my question is, if didn't, you know, if the Lord himself suffered, you know, we're going to suffer as well, you know. And, you know, this in this thing, you're going to be sorrowful, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be depressed, you know. And you're going to be serious, that's the thing. The Passover is not, not a laughing matter, it is not a joke, you know. Um, I wanted to get into uh, a little bit of Luke, Luke the 22nd chapter, when I wish I was in the garden, or well, when he was in the Mount of Olives. And, uh, you know, he was pleading with the disciples to pray with him, because, you know, he didn't want to take, he didn't want to drink of the cup, you know, that he, you know, that he had to drink of, man, which was, you know, sacrificing himself for the nation. You know, this is Luke chapter 22, verse 39. And he came out and went as he was wont meaning as he was accustomed to, or, you know, as, you know, on the path or something like that, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from, he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You know? So, yeah, I wish I didn't want to go through what he had to go through, man. You know, his flesh, you know, he had his, he was a man too. He had his flesh, you know, trying to kick in and, you know, uh, Satan tried to get him to, you know, to go some other way. But, you know, what he did was instead of being presumptuous and going about what he wanted to do, you know, he prayed to the Lord about it, you know. You know, and he said, you know, well, you know, not my will, but, you know, your will be done, which is a prophecy, you know. And, you know, these, as you well know, these scriptures were written to him, man. And the big prophecy was uh, Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, which we're going to get into a little bit. And it says, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening them, strengthening him. You know, so as he prayed, you know, there was an angel giving him strength, you know, to go through, to give him the strength to go through what was about to happen. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You know, and that, that's actually a medical condition. Esau calls it hematidrosis. And I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bring that up in the tab. It says, and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. You know, and he said and said to them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And the reason, you know, why. You, he was telling the disciples, like, man, hurry up, get up, get up and pray with me, you know. I need somebody to keep me company, because he was going through all types of things in his mind, man. The Lord was under under extreme amounts of stress, man. Just like we were during the time of the Exodus, man. During the Passover and, and Exodus chapter 12, we were under extreme amounts of stress, man. There was no laughing, there was no, no playing around, and none of that, man. You know? But you got guys now that take the Passover for granted, like it's this all grand celebration, man, which it's not, you know. We're well, what what you're, what you call a celebration, you know, and being and making light of it, we're we're it's a, the Passover is remembrance, 
is a remembrance from being saved from death, man, and being de and also being delivered from you know from the from the uh, captivity of Egypt. You know, and guys will guys will say, "Oh yeah, the Passover is about being delivered from Egypt," but what about the downside, man? Was the downside was death was all around. You know, it was a horrible time. You no, know, Yahweh Shai, death was death was in the air, man. So what kind of vibe does that entail? That entails sorrowful, sorrowfulness, you know, uh, depression, you know, seriousness, haste, not to linger and, you know, have burgers and fringes, man, and marry each other, man. That's not that's not what the Passover is about, you know. We were as a nation, we were under extreme amounts of stress, man. This is from Wikipedia. As uh, hematidrosis, hema meaning blood, you know, tidrosis meaning uh, sweat. You know, it says also called hematidrosis. It says it's a very rare condition in which a human sweats blood. And then the scripture just say here, when it says, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Let's see what what what's the uh, cause of this condition. Since the actual cause of this phenomenon is not certain, some scientists speculate that it happens when a person is under extreme stress. So that's what you can entail with this scripture, man. Now I wish I was under extreme stress, you know? And I'm pretty sure he was under this same stress during the during when he had his Passover, man. But now, since the hour is approaching and it's getting closer and closer. You know, the, the more and more he's starting to feel it in the spirit. You know? And I'm pretty sure, you know, he started reminiscing on the prophecies. Because he knew the prophecies, so he knew this was going to happen, man. That's why he prayed to the Lord. And he said, but, you know, your will is going to be done no matter what. You know? So I'm pretty sure he reflected on, you know, pretty much reflected on the scripture here. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You know, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. You know, and that speaks to Yahweh Shai, you know, the root of Jesse. He hath no form nor comeliness, meaning he, he wasn't he wasn't pleasing to the eye to look at, man. He probably wasn't the most fancy guy around, man. He didn't have a million dollars in his pocket, walking around having a, having a pocket chain watch and driving a Lamborghini, none of that, man. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. I mean, he didn't look like they wanted the son of the most high to look, you know. He is despised and rejected of men because everyone was looking at him with fleshly eyes, man. They weren't thinking spiritual. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Now, doesn't that sound a lot like Yahweh Shai? Under extreme stress. Sweating as if it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. It just said he's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Because he has all the knowledge, man. He knew exactly what was going to happen, why it's happening, and who he was doing it for, man. The scripture says he took, uh, took upon himself all our sins. That has a great stress on your body as well as the spirit, man. And you got niggas around here laughing and joking and, and making it a party, man. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. I mean, he wasn't well liked. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the most high and afflicted. Right? He bore our griefs. But, you know, and the people that, that he bore the grief for, they, they figured out, they figured, you know, this is, this is a, this is a, you know, this is Satan, man. He deserved what he got on the cross. That's what they were saying, you know. But instead, he was the one that bore our griefs, man. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, right? Because his sacrifice, you know, brought upon us the new covenant, which you know set us under that grace under this grace period, man. You know, it was his sacrifice. That is allowing the Gentiles to come back to the fold. He's the reason why your monkey ass got to know you're an Israelite in the first place. Just from that act. But niggas take everything from granted for granted, man. 
you know. But not knowing that this, this what you call this great work, what you call the truth, happened by literally blood, sweat, and tears, man, of the Lord of Lords himself, you know. And it only happened because he knew and he had the knowledge of the scriptures, man, which a lot of you guys don't have, you know. And he understood that, look, this is not the time to be laughing and joking. You know, the only time you laugh and joke about about serious matters is when you and you honestly don't know and you're honestly ignorant to the fact. You know, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. So he had the knowledge and wisdom of the prophecies and the scriptures, man. So he knew exactly what was going to happen to him. He knew the prophecies. He knew he was going to get put to death. He even told, he even told, you know, the, um, he even told, uh, I can't remember who it was. I don't remember if it was a woman or a man. But in order to use the house for the Passover, he said, for my time is at hand. You know, because he knew that the time was going to come when Judas was going to betray him and he was going to be put to death. You know? That's why he that's why he had all the sorrow, man. That's why he was under forms of extreme stress. You know, and that's what us brothers in the truth, we're gonna have to suffer too, man. We're gonna to, we're gonna be under these forms of extreme stress. The longer and longer we keep going in the truth, you know, the closer and closer we get to the end, the more stressful it's going to become, you know. This is Hebrews chapter two, verse nine. But we see Yahweh Shai, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of the Most High, should taste death for every man. And that's what he did. Then Isaiah 53 said he borne our griefs. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So it says he should taste death for every man. So we were redeemed from this act, you know, for it became him, men in death, for it became him. For whom are all things? Because he created the earth, and he created the earth to be round. And by whom are all things? And bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So that's how we're going to receive salvation, man, through sufferings, man. Not from laughing and joking and having parties and shit, man. You know, having Israelite parties and charging $500 for a a family of five, man, that ain't that ain't gonna get us saved out of here. You know, our salvation is being perfect, made perfect through sufferings, and the Passover represents us, it represents death passing over us. You know, the destroyer passed over our houses and destroyed, you know, the the undesirables of Israel and and destroyed the Egyptians, man. Fast forwarding up to Yahushai, you know, the Passover represented Yahushai being that sacrificial lamb. Fast forwarding up to now in the end days, we're looking for a new Passover. We're looking for, you know, us to not only, um, you know, be transitioned from the from the kingdom, you know, having that having that exodus out of America, out of Babylon and being extracted, but also, you know, death passing over us as well too. You know, back then the destroyers with the sword and with you know various plagues. You know, now the destroyer is going to be the chariot and the nuclear missiles. You got the pestilence, the 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 uh, RFID chip, which is death. You got the the martial law, the race riots. Those are all those are all instruments of destruction that have that we're looking forward to passing over us as well, man. And if you want that gift of death passing you over, you have to take Passover seriously. You know, with that, I want to give all praise to you. How about you, Shai? Double honor to the apostle and elders of great millstone. A salutation to all the brothers, the sincere brothers on the four corners of the earth, posting the word with truth and sincerity, and celebration, celebrating the Passover with haste and humility, you know, in a serious mindset. Shalom.